Hey guys, Zach Casagoon from the Grimdark Compendium. If you liked today's video, make sure to comment, like, and subscribe. Most importantly, if you want to learn more about the Grimdark style, head over to the GrimdarkCompendium.com, the best place to learn about the style on the internet. What's up guys, Zach Cascoon Miniatures back with another video tutorial, and this time we're going to be taking a look at how to finalize our designs, bring our bases into a more grim dark realm before we go on to painting. Alright guys, so this is where we left off last time. I was, I was going to go straight into painting this. Um, but I didn't want to really skip out on any of the info. I definitely want to share with you kind of the additional things I do to kind of bring it more into a grimdark style. Uh, a lot of which we use bits for, so things like skulls, lots of other bits we can use from the Games Workshop range or even re resin printed bits. Also like to use copper wiring. I'll show you a couple examples I have of that. So this is a 20 gauge and I have a 16 gauge copper wire here. I really like these two uh, sizes of wire. They work really well for Warhammer. You can use them as ropes, even like wiring if you're doing stuff in the 40K kind of thing. And even use, uh, like to use that jeweler's chain I just showed there. Uh, so here's, here's an example of a base that I made. And I wanna kinda show you how I I consistently use the same products. Uh, so here we have bits from Games Workshop, skulls, uh, uh, other bits, that sort of thing. You see the mushrooms. You see I have this large bit here for like the centerpiece of the design. And uh, right there where that little piece is kind of knocked off there, that was where I had another model. Uh, but I took him off of there just to kind of mess around with it more. But you can see static grass, all the normal things. I like to use a lot of the same products. Uh, so there's a lot of natural stuff on that base. And this base has some natural stuff on it too. But this is more bit focused right here. So we built this base primarily from a lot of the, the bits that we find in Warhammer 40k, a lot of the buildings and that sort of thing. Uh, but we also use some roots and stuff that we use for trees. Again, the jeweler's chain, uh, some skulls, and lots of the wiring. So uh, this is a larger gauge wire here. Uh, those are a little bit larger gauge. I'll show you those here in a few seconds. And then those small little wires on the ground, those are the copper wires. And even a uh, little bit of a airbrush hose right there. And uh, some stuff from Forge World too, some uh, wires off the Titans. So here, here's another look at some additional wiring I use. This is just normal, like, electrician's wiring. Um, stuff you can typically find at a hardware store. Uh, you can either use that as is or cut it open. It's got a lots of very fine copper wire in there, so you can use that. Uh, also, I have some of this right here. Also, something I picked up from, like, a Lowe's or Home Depot, just any hardware store. And uh, it's, it's kind of like a... It's a different material, but it works a lot like copper. So the reason I like copper and stuff like that is very malleable. So if we want to make like a wire that's laying on the ground, you can do that kind of thing with uh, with copper wiring. And you kind of shape it and mold it to whatever you want it to be. Uh, you can only also use things like guitar strings. Uh, those are a little bit less malleable. I like to use those for like pipes and that sort of thing on actual figures. Um, so, so all right, so let's take a look this is where we left off last time. We had all the natural stuff done, all the rocks, the trees, the roots, the grass, uh, all that kind of thing was done, and it looks really cool for us, but we want to kind of make this look a little bit more kind of spooky and give it a little bit of a, uh, like a horror feel to it. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start working through this base and start adding bits to it. So we are, I typically like to use bits. You know, you can always scratch build stuff, and that's really cool, but, you know, with Warhammer, and uh, in the scale that we're working with our bases, there's always just a ton of bits that we can work from. And uh, this what I'm adding here. This is like a little water, uh, like a pouch or a little water skin. And I just, you know, glued that onto the, uh, the branch like it was just kind of hanging for the branch. Same thing with that bell. Just used a little bit of the jeweler's chain and a bell off of a Death Guard model. And just kind of suspended that from the tree. I'm going to keep with that theme. I want a lot of things hanging from the branches here. So I'm going to use some of that really fine copper wire uh, that I took out of that larger black wire. I'm going to uh, kind of make like little strings to hang some skulls on. And I want this kind of like hanging skull theme throughout the branches. Uh, that sort of thing. 
And when I add these to the branch, you can see I have a lot of excess. And that's just so I can wrap that excess uh, wire around the branch to make to make it look like these skulls are like kind of tied up intentionally. You know, it looks very human done, human made. And that's, you know, that's kind of the vibe we're going through there. Another important thing about when you hang things from trees is you, also, you always want varying lengths of string. You don't want your stuff to all be hanging the exact same length. That kind of creates a visual distraction. So you want to make sure that you get a good variation in the lengths of your uh, ropes or whatever that's going to be uh, suspending skulls or anything like that just to give it a nice balance and uh, be more pleasing to the eye. So after that I'm going to go through and start doing some more work with skulls throughout the ground and everything like that. So one of the main, uh, adding skulls is a pretty simple idea and uh, you might be wondering why I'm trying to explain it. It's pretty simple. You just add skulls to the base. But one of the more important things about that is adding them in a, in a, a like a compositionally correct way you like you don't want to stack these up and and just kind of not think about how you're adding them add each skull individually and consider the composition kind of like how I'm holding that base right there looking at it from basically like the top down you want to make sure when you're adding lots of things like that lots of skulls you want to make sure and add each skull individually and always keep the composition of how you're laying that base out in mind so once we get everything added on there I've just gone ahead and primed all that sort of thing in, just using the Stylon Res Gray Primer. And that'll just give me a better look at things, makes the, the copper wire and all that sort of stuff look more natural. You know, of course, we'll paint that up to look more like some kind of rope or something like that. But after this, I'm just going to be taking a look at the base, making sure I'm happy with the design, making sure that the, the composition is correct, and looking at it and uh, considering what else I could add to this space uh, to give it a little bit more flair or anything like this. At this point, I'm pretty happy with it. This is going to be an Age of Sigmar base. Now, uh, if this was something for like 40k, I could consider going in and adding some like kind of lost uh, robotic pieces or pieces of armor or you know something like that with some like wires hanging out or you know some kind of abandoned. A uh, piece of machinery and disrepair, that sort of thing. Um, but for, in this scenario, uh, we're going for just creepy, kind of witch-looking forest. And uh, that's looking pretty good, as is. Lots of natural stuff and just keeping it in the Age of Sigmar realm. Now again, if we look back at this right here, this is a, another design that I've done here. This is more uh, 40K inspired and uh, using just primarily bits and uh, just lots of different techniques to add those wires which I explained earlier in the video so two kind of separate approaches there and let me show you what I'm going to be using this base on so this was my initial design for my kind of uh, the basing I'm going for uh, I'm actually just working on a witch elves army and I'm building this base this basing scheme for that army this was the initial design here now it looks very similar but the the problem with this is I used a lot of uh, brass etching plants and uh, a lot of like uh, plastic card and stuff in that uh, design which was just kind of like very cost absorbent it cost a lot of time uh, like a lot of time to make those things and it also cost a lot of money to buy things like that uh, so I kind of did a redesign of the base and I, I kept it uh, pretty simple this time just using lots of natural things that I can just go out and find because I'm going to be using this on my um, daughters of Cain so I'm going to be using this on uh, Morathi. Uh, here you can see I have some of the miniatures on here just to kind of see what they look like. So, uh, so you can kind of see the whole process I go through of designing uh, things for armies and stuff like this. Now these miniatures that you see here are ready for final details. They're essentially based, based out. And if you remember uh, a little while ago I posted a video of this figure here and this is the color scheme uh, for the skin that I'll be using. So um, you can see that it has a lot of green and, and that sort of thing in there. A lot of natural tones, some browns and greens. And that's all designed to fit with that natural kind of haunted forest base. Because I, I already know what the color scheme for the base is going to be. Since I've already designed one, I designed one for, that, for the cauldron model I showed. Uh, but again, like I was saying, lots of parts or little pieces I use in that were very costly, uh, not very efficient. So I figured I could redesign it because it's a very large army that I'm working on and just get a little bit, uh, 
a little bit better base and be able to build it more efficiently. So pretty much at this point, all I need to do is go back through all the models that I have ready for final details and just add those uh, skin tone uh, filters and stuff like that that'll immerse them more in their environment. So I already know what this is going to look like painted. Uh, we will get in that, uh, get into that in the, in the next video. Uh, so I, I just wanted to show this a little bit so you know how I kind of get it to that final stage before paint. Um, and then, you know, we'll paint it up and then we'll, I might even show a video of how I kind of take a model that's ready to be finalized and uh, kind of immerse it into the environment that I planned for it. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll catch you in the next one.